my name is Colin. Um, I like to do martial arts. Um, I like to obviously do movies. Uh, big part of my life. I also like to. Um, I also like to do art. I like to do sketching. And I'm a big nerd. Uh, I love comic books. I love comic book films. I love discussing and debating everything comic book related, um, Star Wars related. So just kind of, kind of who I am. Um, obviously, one movie that inspired me was Star Wars. Uh, I remember I was four years old, and my mom she would always record um, these um, Nickelodeon. Um, TV shows, and they were like little kid shows. She'd always record them on a VHS, and I was looking for one the other day, and I couldn't find one, and my dad, he had some Star Wars VHS tapes, but I didn't know about it. And I saw a VHS tape, and I looked at it, and I was like, oh, okay. It looked cool. I didn't know what it was. And so I plugged it in, and then all, you, all of a sudden, you hear the, the blasting Star Wars theme music, and you saw the title crawl, and then you saw the spaceship fly over, and then you see the Star Destroyer. That got me hooked instantly. And that obviously has affected my life. If it wasn't for Star Wars, I don't think I would have jump-started as fast as I would. So definitely Star Wars, um, some of the superhero movies I saw at the time, obviously Spider-Man, uh, some of the Tim Burton Batman movies, I loved those as well. And when I was about eight, I got into Indiana Jones. I wanted to go see the fourth movie, and so before I went and saw the fourth movie, I saw the original three. My mom got them for me on um, Blu-ray DVD, and I watched them. So those were some of them. I like Jurassic Park. That was a good one for me. And some of the more recent ones that I liked were Christopher Nolan's movies. I loved his Batman trilogy. Uh, I loved his other films before he did that with Insomnia and Memento. Uh, those were some of uh, his uh, favorite movies that I liked, it, especially Inception. I loved Inception, and I did a lot of research on dreaming, and that got me interested into dreams and stuff, and so I loved Inception. And a more recent film that came out, which is Interstellar, I loved that film, and that one just inspired me to go beyond my filmmaking perspective, and made me want to be, wanted me to aspire to film more than I usually do. So that's, so those are some of the th films I love. Uh, some of my favorite films, uh, probably Empire Strikes Back, first Indiana Jones film, and probably uh, Inception. Those are probably my favorite movies. Uh, I got interested in film at a very young age. When I was four, uh, I had a birthday party, and it was Star Wars themed, because I recently became a Star Wars fan. And so my mom, she went online and got a b us a bunch of capes and lightsabers, and uh, we set up a bounty house, and we had this cool lightsaber fight. My dad had a camera, and he was filming the whole thing, and then he hooked it up to the TV. And I thought it was so cool to make videos. So I'd, I'd nag my dad every single day just to make me just to make videos, and I'd dress up in a cape, and I'd have a lightsaber, and I'd pretend I was so cool. And at that point, I was really interested in film, and then it kind of died down. When I was 5 to 10, I really wanted to be a photographer or an artist, and so I didn't even go back to the idea of film until when I turned 10, I think. And when I was 10, uh, my cousin, he had come down and he was like, Hey, I'm going to be in the talent show. I need help with this video. Why don't we make a Star Wars video? And we made it. And it is probably one of the most embarrassing things I'd ever done. I was just a 10-year-old kid. I was like, and I was throwing a lightsaber down. I was making sound effects. I was like, shh. It was the most embarrassing video I had ever made in my entire life. But if it wasn't for that video, I don't think I would have started my interest back. So, if I didn't make that video, I probably wouldn't have done it. But that video, just making it, made me realize, hey, we, I should get back to this. I love doing this. I love making films. And so, doing that video, I got back into it. I begged my mom to get me a camera for my birthday. And she said, we can use your birthday money from my grandma to buy me a camera. And so I got this little tiny Panasonic camera and that thing is beat up like no other. It is just falling apart. It's got duct tape on it or something like that. I don't know. And that was my first camera and I use that thing so much. I even, I still even use it today for BTS um, work. But um, yeah, that's how I got interested in it. I met Jackson way before we officially, officially met. I remember 
my mom telling me a story that we were in the same nursery in church and Jackson was sitting in the corner playing with a pirate ship and I was sitting in the other corner playing with a spaceship that I brought from home and my mom was talking to his mom saying like they're gonna be good friends one day and so then later his mom invited me to come to his birthday party it was a pirate birthday party I remember uh, but I didn't remember very much about it I remember him in fourth grade he would talk about Legos and stuff and I'd be like oh that's cool and then we officially met met in fifth grade, I remember we were sitting next to each other. The teacher had placed us next to each other, and he was sitting to my left, and I was sitting to his right. And I remember, and th this is just kind of me being prejudiced, but I was like, oh man, this kid again talking about Legos and whatnot. But secretly, I loved Legos. So I would just sit there, and I was like, oh, okay. And then I found out we had similar interests. He liked Halo, I liked Halo. He liked Star Wars, I liked Star Wars. He liked Indiana Jones, I liked Indiana Jones. He likes Legos, I like Legos. So we instantly got interested in the same things together. But um, it was just, at first, my prejudice got in the way just because just all kids are prejudiced. And then um, and then we just instantly became friends right there. And he found out I did movies. And so he was more into the acting. I was more into the technical aspect of it, just making the actual movie. And so I was pretty much the director. He was the actor. And... He was basically my other half, and we made movies together, we attempted to make movies together, and it just instantly clicked from there. The very first video we both ever made... Oh, let's see... Oh, yeah. Well, the very first video we ever made was the Star Wars video. I wanted to make another Star Wars film, and it just didn't work out. We just tried a bunch of times, and... We even made posters for it. We were gonna like go around town and we would like tape it to, we would like tape it to poles and stuff, and we just never did it. But that was gonna be our very first film we ever made. But officially, our very first film we ever made officially, that's a hard official copy, was probably The Kidnap. And I love doing The Kidnap because it's like our very first action film. And I remember I was just sitting in my room one day, and I was just hanging out, and then I hear a knock at the door, and there's Jackson. And he's just coming on in, and he's just showing me all these videos he got. And then he, and then I was like, hey, we should make an action film. And then boom, we, j we made The Kidnap. And it was probably one of my favorite movies at that time making, and I loved it. And I loved watching it every single time from then on. My involvement with Bengal Productions, or Bengal Pro, is um, he's just like, hey, you want to put this video, you want to put the kidnap and some of your other stop motion videos on my channel? It's like, sure, I'll upload a couple. And I remember the kidnap got a couple hundred views. My stop motion videos got maybe 20 views or something like that. And I got involved with it, and I was like, hey, why don't we change this about it and make it a little bit better? And he's like, okay. And so I, he originally had this logo of like a, a purple headphone bunny type thing I don't remember and I was remember and I remember I made three different logos and the logo we have now is one I is the one I made some people are like oh, it's fake it's fake you took it off the internet I was like I referenced it from the internet but I actually made our logo and Jackson's like that's awesome let's use it and so that became our new official logo and my involvement was we I basically made our channel a little bit more involved I made our Facebook page I made a Twitter page I got us a new logo, I made sure we had update videos to let people know, hey, we're not gone, we're just busy. And so my involvement was, I made our YouTube channel more of a productive channel, and made sure we gave them updates and stuff. So that was kind of my involvement of, of how I practically created Bingle Pro. My involvement with Teal and Eagle was, we made the kidnap, well, I, me and him made the kidnap together, we both made Tracing Vengeance, and I made a short film called 72 Flaws, and then he made a, a, and then we shot a scene for a Navy SEAL movie he was doing, I think. And we put all four of those together, and we got episode one of Teal and Eagle. Um, and that was kind of my involvement. And then I did episode two, and then he came back a little bit later and did episode three. And then after that winter, our involvement went, okay, let's do four through ten now. And my involvement was I made sure we got everything done. I made sure it was all perfect. I remember um, helping out, making sure that it came out on time. And that was kind of my involvement with Teal and Eagle and how I kind of created it. One of my favorite movies I ever made was Part of the Plan.
Um, I remember I was at Young Men's one night for my church, and they're like, hey, Colin knows how to do videos. Why don't we make a video? And so I was trying to get a short film made, but it was going to be very hard to do. And so I remember, hey, I'll just incorporate my short film into this video we're doing. So it was like a three-week project we made. And, um, and so all the people in my young men's group, they helped out. And it has become one of my most successful, most favorite film I had ever made. And it was so fun to make. We, it, it was so good. My favorite scene in that is probably the interrogation room scene. Uh, that was the very first scene we shot. Um, and it was one of my favorite scenes to actually go back and watch a couple times. And, um... And it was so fun to just do it. Every scene that I filmed was so good. And the way it was put together was so good. And the way it came out, it was really good as well. And every single time I watch it, I was I just love every single time I watch it. And that was one of my favorite videos I ever made. Oh, I've already established one. But other than the Star Wars video I already established, on Bangle Pro, oh, one video I regret doing there's I'll at least name three um where's my straw I hate that one I don't know why I put it up <laughs> where's my straw is so random I just that was the day of my birthday and I was I just barely turned 14 and I'm gonna I'm, I'm just sitting there like where's my straw it was so stupid I don't even know why I put that up there where's my straw Animal abuse is another one I don't like. It was just so stupid. The way I said everything. <laughs> and I just don't like animal abuse. And the third one is probably... Well, it's not even on our channel anymore. It's called Crazy You Possessed Baby on Drugs. We were, <laughs> we were up at midnight. And we j I was just showing Jackson. Me and Jackson were both showing each other like... Some of these weird, crazy videos we both watched. And one of them was this little baby on the freaking ground, like, moving its legs like a little, little freaking squid. And we were just laughing our heads off. We just said, hey, let's film a video. <laughs> that is probably the icing on the cake right there of one of my least favorite videos I had ever made. Uh, with filmmaking, I noticed that I got better. And, um, not... Even with Hollywood directors, most of them don't go back and look at their movie movies. One filmmaker I do aspire to and love is Christopher Nolan. He even says this in his interviews that his movies aren't even perfect. They're not. Even, they're never going to be perfect. And he goes back to each of his films and he looks at little mistakes that he notices. And he does it. And he makes sure that he doesn't make that mistake in his next film. And that's what I usually do. I look at my films back and. Even my, with my recent one, Part of the Plan, I noticed it's not even that perfect. And I noticed some little things in there that I could have done better, and I'm going to do better the next time I make a film. And so, um, in my changes in filmmaking, I pay attention to more details with each film that comes out that gets better and better, because I pay attention to the details and the mistakes I made. So, in my filmmaking, I got better with that. With YouTube, with our channel... Like I established before, we're a lot more involved. We make sure we give people updates on what we're doing. And um, and I basically... And one big change is our subscribers. We went from maybe two subscribers to 181 subscribers. And that is huge for us. I never even thought we would get not even 50 subscribers, let alone 181. And so that's a big change for us. And we have a lot more involvement. We got a couple of fans out there. And so that's one big change is... One of the big changes I've noticed in our um, channel as well. One of my favorite things working with Jackson is he comes up with these good ideas. He comes up with things as like, hey, we could do this and this. And I'm just like, hey, I'll give you a few tips on what we could do. Because I've learned from some stuff. We could add this. We could do this. And I'll get my buddy Wilson to do this and this. And he comes up with good ideas. He's got an... He, he's got the base for everything. I'm just the guy who puts the details in. The real the real building is when we actually make it, when we actually film and edit it. That's when the actual building comes in to make our project. He comes up with the base. It's a very sturdy base. I add in the detail, and the film does the rest of the work. And so that's why I like working about Jackson. He's got these good ideas, 
and he's got good things that we could have a base for. Um, what I hope in the future is um, I keep making videos and get progressively good. What I hope to do is to um, have this as a job. I want to be able to do making films as a job. And um, what I hope to do is I hope to um, go to school um, after I go to after I graduate high school. I plan to go to college. And I plan to major in art design and graphic designing. So even if I don't become a filmmaker, I could have a fallback um, with an occupation and major in that, get a bachelor's degree. While I have a bachelor's, I could get a job that with, get a job with that bachelor's while I'm trying to do something in the film industry. And that's what I plan to do. And to move to California to try to become a filmmaker, like a Hollywood filmmaker. If not, I'll go to independent filmmaking. If not, I will move back to where I live. Uh, and start my own production company because in the northern and southern part of my state where I live um, that's where the production company is and in the middle it's just nothing it's just agriculture and farming and that's I'm not saying it's not important but that's essential to our state that's where we get some of our um, organic foods and so there's really nothing in the middle of the state and I live in the middle of it and so I hope to start a production company there which will offer more people jobs and it will offer more money and will offer People to get inspired and do the same thing I did. And if that doesn't work, then I'm actually going to move upstate and work for this production company called Spy Hop. And they help youth become filmmakers and get interested in film and doing what they love. And that's what I'm going to plan to do. If not, I will move back down to where I live and become a 4-H teacher. 4-H is like, um, oh, it's like an activity, like an after-school activity. And I would just help kids find their talent in film. And if that doesn't work out, I'll work at McDonald's and be sad and fat and lonely. So, yeah. If that doesn't work out. <laughs> I'll be homeless. <laughs> <laughs>